place for you here So come on, come on
never forget the moment I met you, the moment you called my name. You pulled me out of the darkness and gave me a promise to never thirst again. Satisfies me like you do. Oh, the fountains that won't run dry. Nothing satisfies like you do. Satisfies me like you do. The fountain won't run dry. Nothing satisfies me like you do. Satisfies me like you do. The found that won't run dry. Nothing satisfies me like you do. Nothing satisfies me like you.
to my rescue and I wanna be
that shared this with the Temple Church last week because it's taken, you know, of course, Pastor Rick and Pastor Annette, and of course they asked all of us to pray too on making the decision on whether to join services or kind of how to maneuver um, in this season in our life. And she said she was driving to Gatesville um, last week, I believe it was, and she was looking at the drive coming here and she just had this peace come over her heart and she said it really in order to follow the cloud and the glory of god and the fire of god it took them a lot of work to tear down all of their tabernacle the belongings everything it took them a lot of work to tear it down to follow the cloud and and she said, it's taken us a lot of work to do things different for this ministry, for what God is calling us to do right now at, at this time in our life. And all I kept thinking of was, as Tyler was singing, was, we'll go where he goes. He, if he has not ruined you for your own thought and your own opinion, then you're your God. Because we go for him. We want what he wants for us. We will go if we say, we don't just sing a song. If you go, if you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Whatever you say, I'll say. It's not just words. It can be. But it should be action. Has he ruined everything else? There's no drug that will ever fulfill what he's done inside of this heart there is no relationship there's not even a child in my life because my kids were my god for a long time but when he took that place i knew that if anything happened to my husband anything happened to my children anything happens to my grandchildren and my relationships in my life he's still god to go it took them great effort there's some of us that can't even get in his presence today yes he's here but do you know there is such a greater glory when you get out of yourself and step into what he has it's beautiful and it's something that I long for every single time because I just want more I don't want to settle with just enough
is a love like no other And I will lean back in the loving arms of a beautiful father I'll breathe deep and know that it is good Cause he's in love like no of him we can't help but express love and be love father we just thank you for today I love you Jesus I just love you and I'm so thankful that you came and you gave me away to the father that you took on every single sin that we can think of. Even some we can't think of because our minds won't even let us go there. But you took it all on. You died a brutal death. And you took a beating that wasn't deserved. You are hung, nailed to a cross. And you died for me. You were buried. But you were resurrected. And that's the life we get to live in. Is his resurrected life. He is alive. He is a good God. And he is one that I want to... I, that is the goodness that I want to live in is the goodness of Jesus every single day is his goodness because he loves me and he loves you thank you Jesus father we pray over pastor James this is a word that he has completely and just, he has so asked for your complete direction on how to present this word to the body. So Lord, I ask that you do give us eyes to see and ears to hear, and that we'll truly give this man of God the respect and the honor that he deserves to give him our attention. Father God, we ask for the spirit of the living God just completely invade and come in and move Pastor James out of the way and you just come forth and deliver your word. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time. We honor this time with you. Every distraction. We're going to follow the cloud today. We are not going to be distracted by our own thoughts and our own ways. We're going to follow the fire. Amen. Yes. Now,
they did good. They changed their set last minute. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tim was here, but then Tim, uh, Tim had to leave, didn't he? Okay, so they changed from a regular set to acoustic and changed the songs. And Awesome. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> I was nervous today because I seem like y'all are all cold and I'm the only one sweating, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody else is like this, and I'm over here, man, it sure is hot. I guess I need to get down from the pulpit. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to play a song for, uh, first off. If y'all can, just sit down, just listen to it, let it. I'm actually going to ruin you today, because you're going to be singing this song the rest of the day. Uh, and just let it, let it soak into you, because it's part of what I want to get across, okay?
probably uh, whenever I was going through some personal struggles and some battles, there was one song that I would always turn to as power, as a, as a tool to help me break free from those bondages. I mean, there's power in that song. In fact, how many times I play it, Mikey? Every time, <laughs> every time, because it because it takes me back to a place where I remember fighting those 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 struggles, and I was really, I, I, you know, the song says, "In your freedom, I will live." In your freedom, I will live. There's a place that you could actually live called freedom, and some people think it's a fairy tale land, and it's not. In fact, if I ask y'all the definition of what freedom is to you. Probably most everybody say, well, it's the ability to, to do whenever I, whatever I want, whenever I want to do it. That's freedom to somebody. To me, that's bondage. But to some people, that's considered freedom because you maybe don't like the rules that you're under. You don't like the authority that you're under, so you just really want to break loose. But I'm talking about a different kind of freedom, a freedom that you, a bondage, a freedom from a bondage that you probably don't even comprehend, that we're all in. And this song helped me break free from a lot of those because we didn't have this awesome worship team like we have now. Back when I was going to church, it was 15 people in a small room with the CD playing, and this was one of the songs, and, and I'd plant myself right by the speaker, and I'd just let it empower me to overcome battles and temptations. And this was one of them. I don't know what year this came out. Yeah, anyways. But there, there's power in the statement. In fact, this, it starts out, I love you, Lord. How many of us, we just sang that? I love you, Lord. Can y'all say it out loud now? Y'all can sing it. Can y'all say it? Say, I love you, Lord. Lord. No, like y'all really mean it. Like, you ready? I love you, Lord. Lord. There's power just making that statement. When you say that, it sets you free to, to... It says, there's the lyric says, I have nothing more than all you offer me. I have nothing else that's of worth to me. I love you, Lord. You rescued me. You're all I want. You're all I need. I want to live in a place called freedom. But to become free from something, first you have to realize that you might be bound to it. And the only way that you'll ever realize if you're bound to something is to test if you're in control of it or not. There's some things that are actually really good that you can be bound to. Food. (laughs) Things that aren't against the law. Things that God created and designed just being done outside of his box, his boundaries that he told us to do. I think it is time. You know, probably one of the most empowering things that I used to do that I haven't done as much as I used to, but we're fixing to get started again, is fasting. I was always testing boundaries if I was in control or not. Simple things like coffee. Say this all, this coffee. But you know what? I'm not going to be controlled by anything. If I'm going to live in a place called freedom, then I have to test my freedom. TV. I, well, it was the worst thing I, I did. I fasted elevators one time. Craziest thing, because I would fast, you name it. It's not, it's not food. I fasted the elevators one time. You know what? God made me work that one out. <laughs> I worked at a, the, the fifth floor of a, uh, at a hospital, and that was the same time that I started to fast. And I did 30 days. My, my grandmother went in the hospital at the other end of the hospital on the sixth floor. And I had to go see her. So every, about, every time I got a break, I would run over there. <laughs> Man, I was so wore out. My legs were strong, though. Yes. There's a, there's a place where I found myself, though. It wasn't called freedom. It was called bondage. And I, I, I always relate this to Paul being stuck on that ship that was going through that storm. And, and, and his desire was to get off that ship because this, he knew the ship was going down. That was me. I was stuck on a ship and I was bound to it and I was going down and I was chained to it and I was going down with it. And I wanted to be set free from that place. I said, once you, once you realize you're in that place, it, there's nothing more powerful than to be set free. And whenever a free man's free, 
Oh, there's an excitement and a joy that comes with that. It's like, I am free. You're, you know, watch them. They get loose from the, from the prison. They're going to come out to the streets. They're going to run. They're going to jump. They're going to do all the things they couldn't do before. In fact, we go to do the prison ministry at the church, and we watch them whenever, whenever they do worship. Some of them are forced to sit down. Some of them can't raise their hands or have to keep their hands in their pockets. And the, the, you can just see them exploding because they want to break the rules. So they're just like, there's anything to express freedom that they could do that thing. And boy, when they get the ability to do it, whenever they're released, that they can run and they can dance and they can jump and shout, they do. It's the freedom that they have, but it's something that we take for granted. And oftentimes I come from the prison ministries and I watch them uh, uh, the worship over there, and I'm like coming here, and like y'all look are bound. Why are y'all so uptight over here? Y'all don't move, don't run around, don't do anything. But I remember that. I remember that first time that the Lord said, "Raise your hands, raise your hands, James." It's like I ain't putting my hands up in the air. I said, "Express your freedom." I'm like I can't do it, so I started like this, you know, real close. Slowly work my hands up, but there was an expression because a lot of people talk about when they raise your hands to the Lord, some of them think that it's like a, a, a God is putting a gun to you and making you do it. Raise your hands, but he's not. He's just saying, give yourself to me. And there's a freedom comes whenever you, you, you realize that you're free enough to just give yourself away. He's not demanding anything from you. Amen. It says, John 8, uh, 36 in the Amplified says, if the Son makes you free, then you are unquestionably free. And you've been set free, brother, sister. Everybody's been set free. And there was a gentleman I was counseling with the other day. He said, Pastor James, you don't understand where I'm at. I'm in a place where I'm so bound up, I'm tied. You've never had to make these kind of choices before in your life. And I took that as a compliment. It's like, good, because he doesn't see the guy I used to be. It's like, that's all right, but I can, I can guarantee you that every decision you have to make, and you have to make, and you have to make, I've had to make. There's no decision that's uniquely you. We just have, didn't have to spend as much time on it. Some you blew through that I had to like really toil over. I'm not here to make decisions for you. I can't but I'm here to help you make your decisions. And I want to let you, I want to empower you to live in a place called freedom. No matter if this is your first day in the church or if you've been doing this for 20 years, there's a place that you can dwell called freedom. Drugs, alcohol, sex, tobacco, love of money, vanity, selfishness, anger, that's all the stuff Pastor Lorenda has. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's all the stuff I had to, that's all the stuff I've had to battle over time. I've really, I struggled. I, I, I love my self-opinion of myself. As Norm was talking about pride. Pride is, pride is really is camouflage for sin. That's what pride is. Pride is sin camouflage. I had that too. But I didn't want to stay in that place. And I, you know, I, I finally started breaking three, free from these things in my life. I, I started with obvious stuff, my language. I was bound. I always had to cuss. I had to put those, those on there. I started with my language. I started with alcohol, tobacco, these obvious things. You know, I, I was going to go to a meeting one time. I just, just got to say probably how, how long, uh, within months. And I was going to go into business with this gentleman. We were going to do a... a a business meeting and he says well I, my, I don't really meet at my office I meet at the sports bar down here and I had just given up alcohol it's like I finally done I'm, I broke it and I was really on my second week I think of doing this he said just come on by the sports bar and of course first thing he does slides a beer over in front of me I was like no can't do that and of course yeah, I don't want to offend the guy but I have to tell him no and you know it was tough and he says hey you know I've got an open tab even if I'm not here just hey come on just help yourself it's thousands of dollars is on this tab he was just bragging about how much money he had talk about temptation remember that yeah see what I came to the car see I came to the yeah she didn't want me to go into business with him after that I came to the car and I was like, I did it. I, I did it. It was the simplest of things, but I, I won. I've had a victory in my life. But man, those, some of those easiest battles are the toughest ones. In fact, I stood firm on 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 
I'll read it in the Amplified. Do you have it up there? No temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience, nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance, but God is faithful. To his word, he is compassionate and trustworthy, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. But along with the temptation he has in the past and now, and will always provide the way out so that you will be able to endure it without yielding and overcome temptation with joy. With joy. There's always a way out. And that gave me so much strength. I mean, I, I, I memorized that. And I tattooed it on my forehead. When I looked in the mirror, I would see it. I wanted this. I, I, I ate the scripture. I had to become the scripture because if you're bound and you want to become free, you have to rely on what's, what, what gives you strength. And this scripture right here gave me strength because I was bound and I wanted to be set free. And I realized, you know what? It's not uncommon. He gives me the strength. I can do this. I can do this. One step at a time. One hour, I quit tobacco, I made an hour, I made it two, I made it three, I made it a week, I made it a month. Every victory I counted. I'm talking about me right now, but what's your struggle? What's your battle? Because every minute counts. We just sang the song, in your freedom I will live. We just said it out of our mouths. And it's hard to believe you can live in a place called freedom. But how do we get bound in the first place? There's a scripture right here. John 8, 34. Jesus answered, I assure to you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who practices sin habitually is a slave to sin. You just didn't get this way by doing it once. Been doing it for a long time. Over and over and over. And if you guess what? If you want to be broke... If you want to break free from sins, I'm trying not to create my own words, Julian. I'm doing, how am I doing? Okay. Every time I minister, I find words that I create <laughs> new and they're not in the dictionary. But if you want to break free from something, you also have to do that habitually. You have to create new habits. When I smoked, it was the hardest thing because what, what do we do, Norm? Smoke right after you eat. You smoke when you get in the truck. You smoke whenever you... Uh, uh, get outside with somebody. Oh. No, you don't do that anymore. You're, when you're bound and you want to be set free, you do whatever you have to do, hour by hour, day by day, to be broke free from sin. And it's strong. The temptation is tough, but no temptation has overcome you that isn't common to man. Do you believe that? You just sang the songs that came out of your mouth. But do you believe it? Does it get down deep inside of who you are? A.W. Tozer has a quote. He says, Christians don't lie. They just come to church and sing them. You know how many words up here you just said that they're, they're, they're tools to empower you to be set free from bondages and sin. In your freedom I will live. I love you, Lord. What does the Bible say? Those who love me Obey me. I'm going to get that scripture later. Those who love me, obey me. Do you believe it? A place where you're not bound by things. You're not play, bound by your own opinion of yourself. You're not bound by the things of this world. Other people's opinions of you. You won't believe how, much, how many people are bound by that one. They do things and say things only because they won't want other people to think negative of them. That's probably the biggest one to break free from. When you value other people's opinions over what God says about you. God says you're more than a conqueror through Christ. That all things are possible. I wanted to live in a place called freedom. And I wanted to be found blameless before God. Blameless. Freedom. Not our freedom, but his freedom. Psalms 107 says this, uh, verses 13 through 16, and I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. She got it up there. All right, it says, Then we cried out, Lord, 
help us, rescue us. Did we already do that today? His light broke through the darkness, and he led us out to freedom in his death's dark shadow and snapped every one of our chains. So lift your hands and give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and for his, his miracles of mercy for those he loves. For he smashed through heavy prison doors and shattered the steel bars that held us back to set us free. Just to set us free. There's a place you can live that's called freedom. And when you cry out, Lord, help me, just know he is faithful to his word. And he'll give you everything, including his own strength, to help you accomplish what you ask. I'm living proof. He will always provide a way out. Then comes humility. The next step to being truly free is to be humble. The song says, in your freedom I will live, but you have to, there was an exchange that had to take place. You can't live in freedom and then do what you want to do. You can't live in freedom and still go back to what you used to do that got you bound in the first place. He says, I offer devotion. I offer devotion. I'm not a singer. But I'll tell you what, that thing penetrated my heart. said, you know what, if you want to live in a place called freedom, then you have to give up what you know, what you're comfortable with to live in a place called freedom. You have to, to exchange where you're at, where you're dwelling, where you're, your little area of influence and move to a new place. Offer devotion. When it comes to understanding that we are nothing without him, we have taken the next step into true freedom. The, we, the, the words are, I have nothing more than all you offer me. Think about that. I have nothing more. Because I was on a fast track to nowhere, to death. And he came in and he rescued me. So I already established where I was going and where I was going to dwell. So what I wanted wasn't, wasn't very good. What I was going to go to wasn't a very good dwelling place. So I just forfeited my right to live because I took his hand. He says, I got another place for you to live. So now I realize I'm nothing without him. The humility comes in to realize, and once you make that exchange, you realize where you're going isn't working. But you gotta realize that where you're going isn't working and you gotta give up and surrender that right to go to that place and exchange, go to a place called devotion, called humility, called forgiveness. It's a place that you can live. He said, you rescued me, then God. Then God showed up and saved me. Then God showed up. He swooped down. He broke the bars of the prison that I was in, and he set me free. And it's a choice that I made that day. I offered devotion to him. Sure, true freedom isn't about doing what you want when you want to do it. And it's not living a life without boundaries. But it's living a life in the new boundaries God's created for you. There's a freedom in that. It's exchanging what you're comfortable with for his freedom, his ways. And there's nothing like it. It's not bad. But the world wants to tell you bad. In fact, uh, when Lucifer got kicked out of heaven, he, he was influencing. He was a worship leader. In music, he was all about music. And you're like, well, listening to other artists besides Christian artists isn't a big deal. Then why is there such a war on it? If it's not a big deal, why is there such a sway on the music? Why is there such a push to get all this stuff crammed in your head and your ears all the time? This is a big deal. You subliminally hear it all day long in your, your car. You got the wrong radio station on, pumping it in your head. And you start believing the lies about who you are. This is a big deal. That's probably why he had enough pride to think that he could do it on his own. It says, I'm not living a life that's without boundaries. I'm living within his boundaries. 2 Corinthians uh, 3, verses 15 through 18 in the Amplified says, But to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil of blindness lies over their hearts. But whenever a person turns in repentance and faith to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is emancipation. 
from bondage, true freedom. And we all with unveiled faces continually see as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, a progressive, progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is in the spirit. God wants to take you from a place of bondage to a place called freedom. He's going to do it one step at a time, one day at a time, one hour at a time, until you dwell from over there to a place called freedom. Does anybody need freedom in here? Well, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think about that. I was like, you know, I, I, I evaluate myself, and like I said, I see myself as living in a place of freedom. But I started thinking about the parable of the lost coin. And it's talked about a, a woman who had this coin of value, and one day she had lost it. And I started really thinking about that, and it started, cause I, actually I was driving to work, or not work, I was driving to, to the daycare. It's not work, I love being here. Not the daycare, I love being at the church. No. <laughs> I was driving here, and I, I, the thought came to my head because I was listening to this. The, uh, the thought of being a well-rounded Christian came into my mind. Not round like this. Round, round, round as in, because I think uh, the, the parable of lost coin, it was, it was in a room, a square room like this. And you can even uh, figure this pattern out where everybody walks in this room. There's a, there's a traveled path people go through. But there's always places where things can hide. There, there's a place where this lady lost a coin, and it says, it, it, what's the scripture, uh, Luke 15, verses 8 through 10. I'll read it out of the message. It says, or imagine a woman who had 10 coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and scour the house, looking in every nook and cranny. Hey, nook and cranny is biblical. There you go. That's cool. Looking in every nook and cranny until she finds it. And when she finds it, you can be sure that she calls her friends and neighbors, celebrate with me for I found my lost coin, count on it. There's a coin that she had that got lost and it got put in a place where people don't look very much. A nook and a cranny, it's a corner or something that nobody really pays attention to. But if we're in a call to be a well-rounded Christian, it's when we get rid of our corners. We get rid of our places where things can hide. We get through, through, through the passing of, of, of time, the rough edges slowly get rounded out. And the places where things can hide aren't there anymore. We, we, we get rid of that dead weight, that dead area in our lives. But do we? Because I said this word is for anybody who's been doing this for a long time or it's your first day. If you're in here, I challenge you to search your nooks, your crannies in your life and see what you have in there because there's always room to grow. There's always room to mature. And as soon as you think that you're not free, I mean, as soon as you think that you're free and you don't have anything to worry about, chances are he just set a hook for you. He got a place for you. You probably have something inside of those little nooks and crannies that you hadn't thought about, but slowly over time you develop a new habits. That's why me and Lorinda are going to be fasting this week to our pleasure. Like, well, we really need to search this stuff. It's, it, it's got to a point where we haven't checked our nooks and crannies in a long time, and slowly the enemy creeps in and wants to bind us up again. I'm not going to be bound by anything. I'm not going to be bound by anything. So what is it for you? Maybe it's time to start sweeping some corners out. We all have them. Little corners where we just hide things. Don't want people to know about it. Just put it in the corner. We all say that. Just put it in the corner. But I'm telling you, you're, 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 you're supposed to live a life in a land called freedom. You're supposed to live a life in a land called freedom where you don't be swayed by people's opinions, addictions, anything that holds you back from the fullness of what God has for you. Anything that holds you back, that gets in the way between you and the fullness of what God has for you is a lie from Satan. And we sang the song earlier, maybe it was in prayer, said that he kicks down these walls, the lies that the enemy tries to speak to us slowly through the whispering of his words into our ears. 
and he knocks those down that nothing can keep him from us and his love for us. Time to live in a place called freedom. But one thing he's asking for you. He wants, to, he wants your devotion. He wants to know that today your yes is the same yes for tomorrow. He wants to know that, that whenever you say yes, you mean yes. That's a hard thing to do, especially when you like what you're, you're doing. And then that's where you are. You're bound. You're a slave. You're a slave. And I thought about this, the, 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 the stones, you know, because sometimes these, these temptations that were, these, these struggles that we have, they're like giants. And I started thinking about when David killed Goliath, talking about the, being a well-rounded Christian. When, when David killed Goliath, did he just pick up any rock, any kind of rock at all? It says, it's, it's specific, he said, I picked up five Smooth stones, void of any edges, void of any, any things that could take it off a trajectory where it's supposed to be going. Because if that stone would have had any kind of imperfection in it, when it was sent to go on its path to kill a giant, any kind of imperfection could have made it go to the left or to the right. I'm telling you, he's trying to take you from a place of bondage to a place called freedom. And if you don't smooth out those rough edges... you might not get to the destination that you're called to live in. And it's a good place. I live a good life. I do. He did the guy had a right. I do live in a good place. I'm not, I'm not void of conflict, but I don't have to fight like I used to because I made new habits. I changed everything I did about my life. If, if I was tempted to go to the grocery store, I'd drive a whole loop around the town so I wouldn't go to that grocery store to go buy cigarettes or alcohol. I didn't care. I'll do whatever it takes because I was that desperate to be set free from bondage. And if I fasted TVs, you'd be dang right. The TVs were out of the house. I wasn't going to be tempted beyond. He said he gave me the ability to, be, to overcome temptation. I made it easy. <laughs> Rinda was mad because she wasn't on board with that fast that one time. But I'll tell you this, and I'll, I'll end up right here. Luke 14, verse 16 through 24. This is a story of the feast. Jesus replied with a story. A man prepared a great feast. The man is God. And he sent out many invitations. And when the banquet was ready, he sent out a servant to tell the guest, Come, the banquet is ready. And they all began making excuses. One said, I had just bought a field, and I must inspect it. Please excuse me. And the other said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen, and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. And another said, I just got married, so I can't come. And you don't know the rest of the scripture. He said, I had to go out. He found a whole new group of people to invite. And I know this is relating to the kingdom of God, but I can tell you this. When it comes to fighting temptations, we're going to start making excuses. Say, so, well, you know, I, it, it's really not that bad of a problem. It's not illegal. It's not like I'm smoking weed. I'm, well, that's not even valid because people use that one too. Doesn't say anything in the Bible, Bible about weed. I've had that argument. Yeah. But I'm telling you, stop making excuses. There's a place that you can live that's called freedom. But you've got to get there one step at a time. One day at a time. One week at a time. Until you live in a place where you're truly free. Does anybody want to be free here? Amen? I'll stop with this. John 14, 21. A person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me, then he will be loved by my Father. And I will love him, and I will reveal myself to him, and I will make myself real to him. Are you ready to go to a place called freedom? Are you ready 
get rid of those fears. Fears that I can't do it without it. The ones the enemy tells you that you need it. The one where you think of what that person's going to think of you if you go to work and you act a little bit different. They're going to think less of you. They're not going to want to hang around you because you stopped doing that one thing that they like so much. He might break up with me if I stop going and visiting him in the middle of the night. There's all kinds of bondages we get ourselves into. But I can tell you there's a place called freedom and anything that God ordained it's worth having. Just operate in the box that he said you can operate in. You can live a blameless life before God. And there's nothing more freeing, more satisfying than being able to say, I did it and I did it right and I did it the way you said to do it. It's nothing more satisfying. That's why I keep going. Because I finally tasted it. I was like, it's possible. It's not impossible. Yes, I don't have to fight like I had to, but I live in a place called freedom. I'm like, I'm not leaving this place. And I'll fight like hell. Make sure that I don't ever get bound up again. But I can't do it for you. You have to do it. You have to make the choices yourself. But I'll walk with you because I remember how tough it is. And I'll give you every scripture in the Bible that helps you overcome that thing that you're fighting if you're willing to be set free from it. I'm going to play the song one more time. And you're free to go if you want. I'm not going to stop you. If you want prayer, me and my wife and our elders will be up here. If you want help, ask for help. Amen? Josh, will you get the lights? We're going to play the song one more time. Please uh, join us in celebration. Because I'm telling you, somebody's going to get set free today. Amen? Remember, our church will close next week. Go ahead. Our church will close next week. We'll be in temple. Catch one of the flyers that they're in the printout. Please come join us for prayer.